Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have been slacking with my book haul videos. I like to do a monthly book haul videos, but I haven't done one for March and I haven't done one for April, which means that you guys are gonna get back to back book haul videos. Today is gonna be my March book haul and then tomorrow you're getting my April book haul. So I guess this is kind of a spring book haul, though I will say April's was humongous. That's for tomorrow though. For now, here is everything that I got back in March. I got a couple arcs from some publishers, two from Gallery Books, one from Penguin Teen, and another from St. Martin's Press. Here are the two Gallery Books. I requested the Lauren Lane one, but then this other one came as a bonus. But the Lauren Lane one is To Sir With Love, which is her upcoming rom-com this summer. This is a bit of a retelling of You Got Mail, the movie. Basically, our main characters fall in love online, but hate each other in real life. The heroine here owns a champagne shop, which is really cute, and the hero, he owns a company that wants to buy out her shop. So they're enemies in real life, but then online they meet on a blind dating app. This should be fun. I loved her Central Park Pack series. I mean, I love her books in general. And then the other book they sent was A Cup of Silver Linings by Karen Hawkins. This one is more on the fiction side, women's fiction. It's about three women. One of them owns a tea room, a tea shop. The other one is an architect. And the third one is that architect's granddaughter. I've never read her before, though I think she has written romance before and historical romance too. And the third arc is Look of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. It's a young adult book about the Titanic, of course. The heroine is Asian and it's her story of sneaking into the Titanic and into America. This arc is The Secret Bridesmaid by Katie Birchall. The heroine here is a professional bridesmaid for hire, which is very interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. And here she attends the London aristocracy's biggest wedding of the year. I also got quite a few books from publishers. Montlake sent me me some goodies. They sent the new Megan Quinn book, The Wedding Game. It's enemies to lovers about this DIY TV show competition. The main characters compete against each other. The heroine is an actual DIYer. She runs this Etsy shop. And the hero is a jaded divorce lawyer. I got one of my favorite books this year, Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. This is a foodie romance with an ex-hockey player hero. It's the perfect sunshine grumpy romance. The heroine is a famous actress who takes a break, goes away, to this estate where the hero is also staying at. She doesn't know though that he's the one who's been baking and cooking for her. It is so sweet literally and figuratively. I loved it. Highly highly recommend this book. And I also was sent Not My Match by Elsa Mann Mills which is book two, the second standalone in her football romance series. It's friends to lovers, they become roommates because she needs a place to stay. I think it was okay for me. I gave it three stars. Still fun though. And then I got Back in the Burbs by Tracy Wolf and Avery Flynn with a heroine who loses everything and has to move back to the suburbs and she falls for her grumpy neighbor. I was sent Yes and I Love You by Ronnie Lauren. I really want to read this one. I haven't yet. I haven't really seen a lot of reviews for it either but it sounds really fun. The heroine is this famous online reviewer but in real life she has intense anxiety. This is where the hero comes in. He's an actor and her new hired fake boyfriend. He is supposed to teach her some lessons to try to get over her anxiety. Yellow is apparently a big thing this year with covers. I was sent these four books. Float Plan by Trish Dollar, which was okay for me. I think I gave it three and a half stars. More on the women's fiction side and less romance, which I did know going in, but it is a pretty depressing read because the heroine is trying to get over uh, the suicide of her fiance. They were supposed to go sailing together, but now she's going at it by herself. I got the new Abby Jimenez book, Life's Too Short, which I did enjoy. Some my favorite of hers but I did like it. It's about a YouTuber heroine who may or may not have ALS. She comes into custody of her niece and her very hot lawyer neighbor goes to help her with the baby. I got Twice Shy by Sarah Hogle which was a really really sweet romance. It was very soft and low drama and I definitely liked it a lot more than this author's debut. It's the sunshine grumpy trope. The main characters come into an inheritance of this very rundown estate. And I also got Meet Me in Paradise by Libby Hubshire. I haven't read this one yet. It takes place on a tropical island. The heroine has this fear of traveling and she falls for the stranger who stole her sister's seat on the plane. I got this finished
finished copy of Makeup Breakup by Lily Menon. I did not love this one as much as I wanted to. It's enemies to lovers set in the tech world. The main characters have developed these opposing dating apps. I sadly was just not feeling the chemistry in this book though. I also got To Love and To Loathe by Martha Waters. I read book one to prepare for this book, but did I read the second book yet? No. I did really like the couple here when they showed up in the first book. It's kind of enemies to lovers. They just fight with each other a lot, but I really need to read this historical rom-com. I was also sent The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. This one has the fake relationship trope. We have fake fiancés here and it's also got the brother's best friend trope. The heroine needs a fiancé to get her family off her back. The hero needs a fiancé because of something to do with his inheritance. So they form the perfect plan to be pretend fiancés. And I got this finished copy of another one of my favorite reads this year, Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. I loved it. I adored this one. It was so, so sweet. It's set at a retirement villa. The heroine works at the front desk. The hero is the son of the new owner of the retirement villa, and he's also the new assistant of two of the 90 year old residents. It was so freaking adorable. I loved our main characters so so much. Avon also sent me a couple books. They sent me the new Janine Frost which is Paranormal Romance. Wicked All Night is book three in the Night Rebel series which I love. I haven't read this third one yet but it's another vampire romance about Ian and Veritas. I got some historical romances of course. I got the new Eva Lee Waiting for a Scott Like You. It's apparently a sunshine heroine grumpy hero kind of romance and they go on a road trip together. I read the first two books. I haven't read this third one just yet. I'm not in love with this series but hopefully I do love this third book. And the new Eloisa James Wild Child, also another book that I haven't read yet but a series that I have kept up with. This one is about one of the younger wild siblings. She is a wild child of course and the hero wants someone who is prim and proper. I'm really sad though that this book doesn't have a step back. It's the only one in the series besides the prequel that doesn't have a step back. A friend got me this for Valentine's Day. It's The Earl in My Bed by Sophie Jordan. It's a historical romance novella and it is Valentine's Day themed. I got some more historicals from some publishers. How to Train Your Earl by Amelia Gray with this gorgeous purple cover. I've never read her before but it does sound interesting. The hero makes a bet that he'll win the heroine's hand in marriage before the season is over. I got a Suzanne Enoch book who I've heard really great things about but haven't read her yet either. It's another really pretty cover. St. Martin's Press has gorgeous covers. Hit Me With Your Best Scott is a Highlander romance. It's in a series about these brothers who need to marry English brides or they'll lose their land. I got these two Nora Roberts books, Under Currents and Western Stars. Western Stars is like a two-in-one paperback so there are two western romances here. And another cowboy romance, A Cowboy Kind of Love by Donna Grant. I got these six books from Bell Book Box. This was from their January February Beast Box. If you want to get their boxes you can use my code LACY10 for 10% off. There was The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa which I actually already have a copy of so this is my second copy. It's an enemies to lovers romance that was so much fun. Truly by Carmel Rhodes which is a dark high school romance. I haven't read her yet but this cover is so pretty. These two are the exclusive paperback editions for Yummy Not by QB Tyler which I have read. Super angsty. I think I read it because I heard there was some good grovel in it and there is. And this is Big Ben by Nana Malone which is romantic suspense. These are the two exclusive hardcovers. They look so so nice. Thicker Than Water by Dylan Allen which I read last month. I literally just talked about it in my last wrap up. It's about a best-selling author heroine, a hero who works in Hollywood who wants to adapt her book and she is also an illegal immigrant in the U.S. And the last book in the box is Hookshot by Kennedy Ryan. I am determined to read the series this year. I just need to mentally prepare myself because I know it gets so so intense. This is the third book in the series though. It's got a single dad and it's a sports romance. I got a couple books sent from indie authors as well. This is Take Me by Jen Trin which is book three in her girlfriend series. This one kind of explores polyamory because the heroine who is married, her husband wants to date other people and the husband is not the hero. The hero is actually a co-worker of the heroines. Devney Perry sent me Dotted Lines which is the latest book 
in her Runaway series. The series centers around road trips and the heroine here gets a bit of a second chance romance with her teenage childhood crush. I got these two editions of Lilac that BB Reed sent me, which is a reverse harem rockstar romance. This red purple cover is the original, I think, and the guitar one is the alternate edition. I'm gonna be reading this one soon though. I'm gonna be diving into some reverse harem books for a video, of course. And Nikki Sloan sent me the four books in her Filthy Rich American series, which I devoured. I loved it. I feel like I've talked about the series so, so much in my latest videos, but I did love it. It was great. It was so addicting very hot. The first three books are The Initiation, The Obsession, and The Deception. These three follow the same heroine and the same couple. Book four though, The Redemption, is about the first hero's father. He's an anti-hero. He was a villain in the first three books and now he gets his own happily ever after. This one is my favorite of the series. It was perfection. It's got a huge age gap. It's got office romance. It was just so so good. Amelia Wilde sent me the first two books in her pirate romance series. I think it's called the Devil series, Devil Trilogy. Book one is The Devil in the Deep Blue Sea, and book two is Deal with the Devil. So like I said, pirate romance, which got me really, really excited. So I read book one, but it left me kind of underwhelmed. So I sadly didn't love book one as much as I wanted to. It's a dark pirate romance. There's kidnapping involved. The pirate hero literally kidnaps the heroine. And the last few non romance -y books, before I get into the books that I bought for myself, I was so excited to get a cane of Shadow and Light by Karen Marie Monning, which is the last book in her Fever series, which is one of my favorite urban fantasy series. It's book 11 in the series, and it's actually the final, final book. The last book for Mac and Barons. I haven't read it yet, though. I'm scared to read it. I kind of don't want this series to end. I've also heard some mixed feelings for it, but I mean, I have a feeling that I'll end up loving it. It's a great series, though. It's got great character developments, lots of action anti-heroes, very hot anti-heroes. It's got fae and monsters and magic and stuff. It's so so good. This is The Kindest Lie by Nancy Johnson. It's set in 2008 about racism, racial tension, and the American dream. I got a copy of The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger, which I have watched. I've watched the movie, but I've never read the book. But they sent this one out because the author just released another book last month. And I got this finished copy of Maggie Finds Her Muse by D. Ernst. It's woman's fiction. It's got a heroine who goes to Paris to find inspiration and finally finish up her manuscript. I of course had to buy myself some historical romances, used historical romances, but I didn't go too crazy last month. There are only six books here, so I had some self-control back in March, which is a humongous difference from last year's March. But I bought The Dragon and the Jewel by Virginia Henley, the original cover, which is so stunning with this gold foil spine. The embossing is so nice too. It's such a gorgeous cover. So this one has a princess heroine. She is King Henry's youngest sister and her hero is this powerful knight and warlord. She's an author that I haven't read yet but I had to collect her books because her covers are so so gorgeous. This one is Just One Kiss by Samantha James with this back cover. This one I don't think I actually bought. Someone sent it to me. I can't remember who and I'm feeling really bad right now. But look at the colors and this pose on the back cover. This one has a marriage of convenience. The heroine follows this guy to America to get married, but it turns out he was lying. Instead of seeing the guy that she followed to America for, she sees his older brother. I started collecting some more Cad Martin books, especially her older books with the original covers. I have actually read her before. It was her groveling one because the guy cheated. But because I have read her. I don't feel too bad buying more of her books. This one is Silk and Steel with this step back, a two-page step back. The heroine's uncle is about to commit her into an insane asylum, so she runs away, comes across the hero. She asks him for help and ends up forcing him into a marriage. These two are some older Cad Martin books. Dueling Hearts is from 1989. This is what the pretty cover looks like. This is a western romance, enemies to lovers. The heroine owns and runs 
owns her own ranch, and her greatest enemy is her neighbor Hero. Lover's Gold is from 1991. The hero is this rogue, a rogue and a gunman. They're in different classes of society though, especially when she discovers a fortune. Like she literally strikes gold. So Clash of the Classes, Western Romance. And another new author that I started collecting before reading any of her books is Katherine Anderson. This one is Annie Song and it's got such a beautiful step back. Look how blue and green this is. I've heard amazing things about this one and I'm definitely going to be reading it soon ish. The heroine Annie is mute. She gets pregnant by this guy and the older brother, the older brother of that guy, he offers to marry her and raise that baby as his own. Katherine Anderson writes western romances, western historical romances. I don't read them too often but I'm really excited to read this one. Okay so technically I bought these two hardcovers used but they weren't like eBay purchases, so it's fine. I got this hardcover of Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Kleypas because I own like almost the entire series in hardcover, so I figured I might as well collect it. I love this one though, it's one of my favorites of the Ravenel series, mainly because I love Tom Severin so so much. Tom is quite the morality chain type of hero where he doesn't care about anyone except the heroine and he'll also do anything to have that heroine. I also got this edition of A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas because figured I might as well have the whole series with the original covers because I hate the new covers. This one is a novella in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. I also bought myself the paperback of Fire Night by Penelope Douglas which is like a sequel novella of the Devil's Night series. This one is the last book, the last paperback of the series so I had to get it especially before the entire series changed its covers. I do love the new covers but I would have been super super annoyed if I didn't have the matching original debating whether I should get the new covers too but that is just so so much money so I'll think about that later. I got Charming Like Us by Kristen Becker Ritchie because this book was on sale for five dollars on Amazon. I don't know why or how but I had to get it. This is an MM Romance book seven in the Like Us series. It's about a bodyguard and a filmmaker though it's technically not a bodyguard romance where the bodyguard is protecting the filmmaker. He's protecting someone else. I like this one though it's not a favorite of mine in the series, but I couldn't pass up this book for five dollars. And the last book in my March book haul is another 2021 favorite that I had to get for myself. This is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. It's enemies to lovers, office romance, and also fake dating. All the good tropes rolled into one and I loved it so so much. It's slow burn as well which was great. So much good banter and chemistry. If you haven't read it yet and you love any of the tropes that I talked about, you definitely need to get on it. So that's everything that I got back in March to March you're getting another gigantic book haul. I'm pretty sure that one's gonna be my biggest one yet. I think this month was around 50 books which is pretty average for me and yes I am running out of space so I need to do an unhaul soon but let me know if you read any of these books that I talked about. I hope you guys enjoyed this haul and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!